we're yeah. still good. And time. do you have to be a certain age? Mm -hmm. Right. Do you have to be do you have to be a certain age to uh, go to the military? Yeah. After becoming 20 years old, then yeah. from from government, they give some documents is about okay. about the duty of military. And um oh. and we can choose it when we want to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but oh. yeah, I think um, it is good to go early. So, yeah. 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 Are you looking forward to it? Yeah. So that's why I choose it. I'll I will go to military next year. Okay. You're not scared. You know because I cannot avoid it yeah <laughs> so it's something that you have to do it's compulsory yeah yeah okay so you obviously know what compulsory means compose what Co compulsory what is that compulsory is just a better word for something that you have to do you have to serve your com your country you don't mm. have a choice uh it's like what you are going to do. You are going to the mil military because it's compulsory for your country. Compulsory. Yeah. Yeah. I can write it for you. Let me spot it for you. C O M P U L. S A R Y. S A R Y. Mm. Yes. So that's yeah. When you have to do something that's not by choice, um, whether it's in your family, um, or in your country, or in school, it's compulsory for you to show up in class every day. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I have got a very interesting lesson for us today. Um, so, Teacher Kim told me that you would like to um, discuss news and economy. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, let me share my screen with you. Mm. Okay. So first of all, um, I want you to, I'm going to let you watch a few videos on YouTube that will explain this in a better way for you. It's better to see pictures. And I'm actually glad that we're doing this because you are going to military. <laughs> so um, tell me, um, what is your knowledge about the Ukrainian war? Have you heard of it? Yeah, I saw the news. Okay, and what is your knowledge about the war? Mm. First of all, Russia want to combine Russia and Ukraine as just Russia. So that's yes, why yes. Russia attack. Yes. Yes. Okay. So basically, so you'll see here number one um, over here. Why did Russia attack Ukraine? So basically, the Russians were told that Ukraine is welcoming them into their country, which was Gaslighting. So this is a very important word. Gaslighting. Do you know what gaslighting means? Yeah, I know. Okay. So the Russians were told that Ukraine is welcoming them into their country. That is completely wrong. It's gaslighting. They are saying something that was never discussed. It was never an option. They made that up. Okay. 
But we were told that Russia attacked Ukraine because they want access to the Black Sea. Okay, so here you can see what, um, what's really happening. Okay, and what we are told. So often what we hear on the news and what we are told is not really the case. Okay, so, and then over here, just in short, we'll go back to the video now. Um, why did Russia attack Ukraine? Because the Black Sea is a port. That's where all the ships import and export. So if Russia owns the port, that means they have access to the world economy. Okay, because why? Um, Russia is the biggest gas and oil supplier. That's where half the world gets their gas and oil from, right? So, and Ukraine is the biggest grain supplier. Okay, so now if you think about it, try and make sense of it all. Russia, who supplies gas and oil, they attacked Ukraine, who are the, one of the biggest grain suppliers, which means that Ra uh, Ukraine will no longer be able to supply grain to the rest of the world because there's nothing left, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, so um, do you, are you starting to see the picture of how this war has already affected um, the economy? Um, actually, before I heard the news about the, the raising the, the cost of potato yes. and grain. Yeah because of yeah. this so yeah i can understand yeah that. yeah exactly i mean like i mean we here in south africa we are like suffering because of everything that just went up you know um everything oil gas everything just went sky high and i mean people are losing their jobs or and people are people can't support their families anymore because of everything that's just gone up and it's going to keep mm. going up so it's really affecting not only the economy but it's affecting people's lives and um, it's not even our choice you know this is not even something we did to suffer in this way and I'm talking about the entire world even Russia the people in Russia most people fled when they could you know a lot of the russians did not stand with putin they knew that what he was doing was wrong right so also a side note russia attacked crimea about five years ago because of the same reason because russia wants to own the whole of europe they want to own Ukraine and Crimea and Russia, they want to own it all. And it all goes down to this. Because they want to have full access to the Black Sea. Okay, so that they can import and export as much and as many times as they want, right? So now that is kind of ruined because they can't export or import anything because half the world is no longer supporting Russia. Okay, so Russia brought this upon themselves, right? Mm. They should have thought about this before they actually did this. Right, so now I want to show you, I'm gonna share my screen with you, another screen. Before we go on to the videos, I want you to have a look at this. So here's a map of, just so we can have a great understanding. Okay, so here's Russia, right? This is Crimea. 
Yeah. Russia attacked Crimea five about five, six years ago, right? Because they wanted ownership of the Black Sea. This is the port all along here. Okay, I will take that scribble away. <laughs> okay. And then we've also got, sorry. Then we've got Ukraine. So basically Russia now wants to own this too, which will make it one country, right? Okay, so now let me share um, this video with you. Okay, so just want to see. Okay, so here's just a, so a short summary of um, Putin's war um, on Ukraine. So this is just them explaining um, the history and why he's continuously attacking these um, regions. Okay. So did you see, you listen to that part. So that is where the gaslighting comes in. That is, that was the moment where Russia said that Ukraine welcomed them into their country. And um, Ukraine commented and said that they are one nation. Um, that is that is their own country. That's not two country. It's not one country, you know. Um, they are their own people. They have their own lives. Um, let me just see here. Yeah. Okay. So let's continue. Yeah. 
Soviet power failed to disappear, and many countries overthrew the communist governments. Even in the Cold War, the Russians and their Deep Third were still very strong. Soviet sphere of influence. Both in Russia and in the US, Belarus, Ukraine, and Georgia were committed to pro Soviet Russia But Ukraine and Georgia were both. Okay, so now they've basically taken you back into the history. Before it was all one and then they all separated. And you can we can see clearly that Russia is the enemy. Okay, so I'm gonna skip this part over here because this might just, they're going more back into the history. We want to actually talk about the war that recently happened. Okay, so all you need to know for this basically is in the history, in history, it was one country and then they all separated um, due to Russia being absolutely evil. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so here you can see these people are protesting. Do you know what the word protest means? Yeah. Okay, so they're basically expressing a disapproval of what is going on in the world. So um, you can also see here they are fighting, they are um, protesting against russia owning ukraine right and that's why you said you saw over here the one guy was holding up a board saying ukraine is one country okay because they believe they are one country they are they speak their own language they are nothing like the russians they can't stand putin because he's pure evil he wants to destroy the people. He's basically, he doesn't care about his people. He cares about the money in his pocket, the money that comes in, um, how much of the Black Sea he can own. He's off to power. Okay, so what happens when you are power hungry? You know, um, you end up losing everything and which is what is basically happening to Russia at the moment. Putin did the wrong move and now the rest of the world, um, yeah, they, they don't want to support the Russians. Um, and this is also why, yeah, this is how it's also affected the economy big time. Okay, but we'll get to that video after this one. Okay, you can see over there, Crimea. Did you see that region at the bottom there, Crimea? Okay, so that is the same. Um, well, that's actually a country on its own. So that is the same country that Russia attacked for the exact same reason five years ago. Okay. Russian troops and military equipment 
Ireland and then later he was a member of the Council of Eleven. He came to Ireland with the aid of Scotland and Ireland in 1849 and then before in 1897 for Wales and Russians. Western leaders rejected his plan. Instead, they put force upon the standing army and forced the military to withdraw. Forward, Russian troops continued to enter. And over here, along its border with the Netherlands, Russia began to put a new Russian military force. February 21st, the threat of war was his troops immediately crossed the Ukrainian border and took Russian bounties as hostages. Pretense of war. Ukrainian military state of mind. But the people of Ukraine had to deal with the Russian By Okay. So President Zelensky, that is the president of um, Ukraine. So at first, this this president, he refused to fight back. The whole time he stood steady and he refused to, to fight back. Um, but that is before um, before things got way worse. He refused. He just he 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 said that he's nothing like the Russians. Um, he's not going to fight back. And because of this, the Russians attacked and they they came in hard with troopers and machine guns and they literally destroyed everything. Okay. So. Okay, so let's uh, just a quick question. Um, what do you so what do you think is the difference um, between um, the Ukrainian president and Russia's president? Just 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 a simple um, what's the difference? Remember, I said to you, Putin is a very selfish president. He doesn't care about the people. He only cares about his power, right? Mm -hmm. So now, can you see the difference between the two presidents? The, the president of Ukraine is uh, people. We have to focus on the people instead exactly. of exactly, exactly, yes. So, yeah, it's it's quite it's quite interesting how evil um the uh, the russian president really is i mean he he even put his own people at risk just because of something he wanted that he couldn't have okay and he's destroyed the entire economy okay that is just that's pure evilness he's put everybody's lives um at battle okay mm -hmm. because people are battling Okay, so let's continue. On this way down on February 24th, Putin launched a full scale invasion of Ukraine. Very close to wiping out the entire population of the entire Ukraine. By Friday, the army was seen as a dead end. This is the news of the fall back of the French army that the army of the Ukraine was killed. Okay, Putin chose this war. Okay, so they they started the war. Now they will bear the consequences. And what can you tell me? What do you think the consequences are to the Russians? I was gonna say um, the the definite. Oh, we have to. Punish is about uh, about the war. Even though the war is 
and it. Yes. And uh, well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think they've been punished already? Mm. No. I think they have. Really? Because th these presidents that just spoke, the presidents of England, the presidents of America, the mm. presidents of Europe, um, they, they, they've, they decided, they made the decision to not support Russia by buying gas and oil. So they've already made that, they've already made that decision. Then again, there are businesses like Louis Vuitton, Guess, um, you know, all the expensive brands, Nike, um, Adidas, mm. Guess, you know, mm. Louis Vuitton, yeah. all these, all these uh, brands, they, a lot of them had their own shops in Russia. They've closed mm. down. They refuse to open. They refuse to support Russia. So that already is, you know, that, that's already a consequence. Wow. Okay. The second one is gas and oil. Nobody wants to support the Russians. And that was their biggest income. Thirdly, half the people in Russia has already fled the country because they don't want to support their own presidents. Yeah. Okay. So there's three things that already happened. They are, they are, yes, they are having all the, all the con uh, consequences at the moment. Okay. So do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. Um, you must just let me know when you don't understand something and then I can just explain to you. Okay. okay, but like I say, there's a lot of detail in this video that we're watching, but the main things that we need to focus on is um, why Russia attacked Ukraine and um, how that affects the economy, the, the economy. So we both know now how that affects the economy, but we'll find out more about it in the next video I'm going to show you. Okay. Okay, treading carefully. Do you know what that means? No. Okay, so treading carefully means to be very careful in what you say and do. Okay, I'll type it here for you. It's just a better word, um, a more professional word to use than, than to say, um, I will be careful or I will be careful of what I say. Instead uh -huh. of saying that, you would say, I'm treading carefully. Okay, so let me type that for you. It's just a, a, a better word to use. So next time when you when someone asks you something and you say no i'm just being careful of what i say and do instead of making it a long sentence all you have to say i'm treading carefully okay that's yeah the best way you can put it okay oh we do this okay so let's continue watching Okay. 
sending tons of military aid to the Ukraine. The number of Russian forces keep pushing deeper, but the center is fighting back. What you say, less than 10 minutes, less than a second, like a city. Okay. So you saw that part where um, they they showed they showed you the part that many other countries are gathering uh, the military to help um, Ukraine with the war. Ooh, sorry, <laughs> I've got something else on here playing in my ears. <laughs> Just hold on. There we go. Sorry, I just had to stop that video. <laughs> um, okay, so that already means by, by looking at that picture and by knowing that all these countries are already sending out help to Ukraine. And I mean, it's there's so many countries, like half, most, more than half the world is supporting Ukraine. Um, I think I think actually the entire world, to be honest. Um, so nobody is supporting um, Russia. Okay, so now we are going to have a look at the video mm -hmm. explaining why this affects the economy so much, okay? So it's always better to see pictures than just listening, okay? share that with you okay okay Okay, so sunflower oil supply. I mean, how much sunflower sunflower oil do you guys use in your country? I don't know exactly the amount of the oil, but, but, but I think it's a lot. That, yeah, it's a lot when we make some cook. Yeah, I mean restaurants. Um, we there's so many restaurants that use like a ton of oil a month you know um and if you if you put them all together that's a lot of oil that has to be imported into mm. your country and it no it no longer can it's got to import it from somewhere else where it's more expensive and it's more complex okay so this sunflower oil it's huge um, I don't know if you saw or if it was on the news in your country, but w during this war, people in my country, they were, everybody rushed to the supermarket to buy oil. Literally five liters of oil. People were loading the, the trolleys with oil because they knew that the price was going to go right up. Okay, so this also, not only did it affect the economy, but it created a lot of fear for everyone in the world, you know, um, because of the price, the, the price raise, um, people were starting to panic because if oil prices go up, what about wheat and barley and oil and gas? And the list goes on. I mean, 
how much wheat does your do you eat in your country? A lot, right? Yeah, it's a lot, very a lot. Yeah, and grains and you know, so it has a massive impact on the economy. Um, yeah, and this really, this war changed, it literally changed the entire world. Okay, in a very negative way. Okay, but consequences. Okay, I do believe that we will see the lights eventually. Mm. Okay, what goes up must come down. <laughs> okay, let's continue over here. Today's agricultural exports were mainly to the global south, with countries such as Indonesia and Lebanon quickly taking them and exporting to Cuba and Bangladesh. Okay, so here, this is very interesting. Have you ever traveled to Indonesia? No, I haven't. Uh, do you know what Indonesia looks like? Have you heard of it? Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, Bali. So in 2018, I, I went to Bali for my first time. That's oh. in Indonesia. It's always been a dream. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go. It's beautiful there. And it's so inexpensive, you know. And the reason why it's so inexpensive is because the people there, the people who live in that country are so poor. Mm. They are extremely poor. They have one room and they have like eight family members in one tiny room that live in one little room. Okay. So they struggle and they work so hard every day just to survive. You know, they make their own rice. Mm. Right, but they can't grow um, grain, uh, you know, barley and all that in their country because it's so wet there. Okay, so yeah, they they are suff suffering heavily because mm. they relied on this country. They relied on Ukraine for their grains and their barley, and now they have nothing. And the people in this country already had nothing. Mm. So it's created a, a, a massive struggle for this country and the people. Okay. So let's continue. There we go. Yet its agricultural capacity for Ukraine is rich in minerals. With a mining industry worth more than $15 billion, the country is the world's fifth largest exporter of grain and the fourth largest exporter of titanium. It's a significant producer of gallium and germanium and natural producers, semiconductors, fiber optics, and lighting and dialogues. Ukraine also produces them. Okay, so did you see that? <laughs> I mean, nobody is going to support Russia anymore. So, I mean, that, that factory is what, 19, I think they said $15 billion. It's worth fifteen billion dollars. Now, with no no country supporting Russia, it's going to have such a massive impact on that country. I have no idea mm. how they're going to survive. Okay, so and everybody's suffering. Even they are. So. Do you think it was a wise decision for Russia to attack Ukraine? Yeah, because I think Putin, as he told me that, Putin is so selfish and he, yeah. he is very strong about his statement. Power, mm, his statements. Yeah. So yeah. So I think um, to turn his uh, thought about a war, I think um, yeah. it, it is necessary. Okay, but do you think it was necessary for Russia to attack Ukraine? No, no, no. Like, uh, like the the consequences. Yeah. Is it about about the world too yeah sure. that is necessary. yeah 
No, it's completely unnecessary because they've not only punished themselves, they've punished the entire world, you know, um, and they got absolutely nothing out of it. Mm. Okay. They couldn't get it right with Crimea five years ago. They didn't learn their lesson. They tried again and they got nothing out of it. They've actually just ruined the entire economy. Okay. So let's continue. Okay. Neon lights. If you think of Hong Kong, China, um, New York, all these places. Where do they get the neon lights from? <laughs> do you understand how yeah. badly? <laughs> Pardon? Mm? No, no, no. Oh, okay. So do you see how, um, how big this actually is? You know, um, there's a massive, like you can see over here at the bottom, they say, I'll show you now. Um, the massive disruption this has in the supply chain, like they can't supply any, any other country. Nobody wants to support the Russians. Okay, so the, the once again, these countries have to get suppliers from wherever they can find an affordable supplier of these critical elements. Okay, we call them critical elements because it is so critical to have them. You know, we need lights in our countries. Um, Vegas, Hong Kong, China, they are mm. all about neon lights, right? Yeah. And Korea? Do you guys have yeah, we, lot, a lot of? We use a lot of, yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, it's affecting your country too. So let's continue. Okay. So we are going to have an hour class. Okay. I went into the wrong room before your class. So we've got about another 18 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the world's largest food exporter and the top producer of barley and buckwheat countries such as Egypt, Turkey, and Bangladesh. The country is a key exporter of agricultural fertilizers, accounting for 18% of the world's potash and 20% of its ammonia. Russia's extensive mining industry is first in global diamond production, second in platinum, third in gold, and fourth in silver, and is an important source of rare earth metals such as vanadium and cobalt. Most importantly... Okay, did you see that? Did you understand? what they just explained to you there. Um, let me show you here. Okay, let's watch that part again. Okay. Industry is first in global diamond production, second in platinum, third in gold, and fourth in silver and is an important source of rare earth metals such as vanadium and cobalt. Okay, so not only, um, it also affects businesses in other countries who source diamonds from Russia, who source gold mm. from Russia, and all these metals. Okay, so I never, when I watched um, the war on the news, for the first time, I had no idea why it was such a big thing. Why were people so scared and why was it such a 
big thing. And that is because it was the largest war since World War II. Okay, and it, this has affected the economy more so than it did five years ago with the war against Crimea. Okay, so it's so big because of once again, and you probably tired of hearing it, <laughs> but once again, <laughs> it is because it is, it, it's, it's huge. That it, this is the biggest thing I think that has ever affected um, the economy. Okay, so um, I think you are well aware of what impact certain things have on the economy, right? right. I said, I think you have a, a very clear idea now of how certain uh. things can have an effect on our economy. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you have a do you do you have a better understanding about the economy now? Do you think you've learned yeah. something? Actually, I haven't know known the the processes that were between Ukraine and Russia and the impact of the war between Russia and Ukraine. But yeah, as as by doing these classes, yeah, I think I'll, I can understand easily. Yes, 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 true. Um, I just want to, sorry, I see my battery was about to die. Um, yeah, so, so basically in this lesson, I think it was a great way to explain to you um, how the economy works and how certain things that happen in the world, um, what an impact it can have on the economy. Mm. So this was a great example for me to um, explain to you about the economy. And with that, we also learned so much about Russia and Ukraine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was quite I, interesting. I haven't known. I haven't known the reason why, the, the exact reason why Russia attacked Ukraine. Yeah, so you didn't really know, but now you know. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, and it, it's now that you know, um, so much more are making sense, right? Mm. Yeah, I also felt like that. And to be honest with you, I did a lot of research before this lesson. <laughs> because I also, I was like, no, there must be more. There must be more. Why did they do this? Why is this guy so evil? And I really looked into it and it was really interesting. I really enjoyed looking into this. And um, yeah, I also have a better understanding of you know, how this affects the economy. And the part about the news um, that I wanted to add was, you know, we, we like that part of the part where Russia said that um, Ukraine is welcoming them into their country. So that's where the news comes in because what, that's what we heard that's what we heard from the news. Okay, so we, we, we hear all kinds of things from the news, but it doesn't necessarily mean it is true. Okay, the news today, the news is there to give you bad news. Okay, the news is not really there to give you good news. Do you understand? Okay, so it is the news is also a business. It's, it, it excites people, you know, people want to, to see what's going on in the world, you know, what's, what's happening. Um, and it also, it also puts a lot of fear in people. Hence the reason why I call the news a business because they are marketing bad news 
and fake news and um, they are they are putting fear in people and their daily lives okay not all the news is true and not all the news is untrue so that's why we need to always research what we hear on the news okay we mustn't think that what because we heard it on the news it's true these people in the news industry they feed off negativity okay do you know what it means when i say they feed off negativity yeah yeah okay so it, it makes it, it excites them okay yeah. all negative More things anything. excite them yes yeah and i mean i don't even watch the news do you watch the news yeah sometimes sometimes yeah see i do you, do you enjoy watching the news enjoy how do you okay let me ask you this way <laughs> <laughs> you can't really enjoy watching the news right it's like having popcorn <laughs> enjoying the news okay so let me ask you in this way most of the time how do you feel after you've watched the news do you often feel excited or relieved a sense of relief or do you feel a sense of fear and concern how do you how do you often feel after watching the news in the case of uh, well between ukraine and russia well, i felt i felt uh worried yes because yes. from news they showed the scene of attack exactly yes exactly and what does that tell you exactly what you just said michael they showed you the scene of attack okay so they 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 trying to they the news try and show you the worst scene possible Okay, so yeah, um, the news is, it, it would be great to see some good news on the, on the news, but yeah, I personally, um, I don't watch the news at all because I, yeah, because it's, especially in my country, there is so much, um, our country is at war with itself, basically. We have people running our country and they don't even know how to run it. They have, um, I mean, we have a shortage of water in our country. We have, we have so many problems in our country because we have people who think they can run our country, but they actually can't. They are like Putin. They are more hungry for power than actually care for its people. Okay. So in our country, it's, we don't, I don't want to watch the news because the news is either about the bread that went up or gas that went up or the price of fuel that went up, um, or it's about a murder scene, or it's about whatever, you know, it's never good news. So I just avoid the news completely in my country. I'd rather read a book or search the web for some positive news. <laughs> because positive news it makes you, it makes you feel happy, gives you hope. Yeah, I do so. Yeah. Do you read books? Hmm? Do you read books? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. What books, what kind of books do you read? Do you read novels? 
novels or something. What is it called biology? Biology. No, no, no. Like a, hmm. a biography. Biography. Yes, biography yeah, books. Uh, okay, that's interesting. It's good to read. It's nice to. Um, I enjoy reading books that um, creates more wisdom. You know, so that so um, I can have more wisdom over certain things in life. You know, like war or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, so let me just see. I think we've got a few. No, we've got we've got about four minutes left. Let's finish watching this video to the end, and then um, yeah. all over the world. Okay. Oh, wait, let me just stop my share here. Okay, so that was interesting. <laughs> um, let me go. Cool. Did you enjoy that? Hmm? Um, did you enjoy the lesson? Yeah. Yeah, it was very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to have a look here. Okay, so just let's see. I've got one or two questions to test if you've been listening. <laughs> okay, so question number one. Um, which uh, country was called the bread basket of Europe. Bread basket? The bread basket. So what it means is when they say the bread basket, it's basically an expression of, okay, of what they supply. So what is bread made of? Wheat. Okay. Yes. So Ukraine was called the bread basket of Europe because of its fertile soil um, for grain. Okay, so the reason why they were called the bread basket of Europe is because of the highly fertile soil and the grains. Okay, bread, you make bread from grains. Okay, so bread baskets is just an expression. It's okay. like cutting. Pardon? The sound. the sound is cutting. Oh, sorry. I'm not sure why. Is it better now? Let me see here. Just hold on. Is that better? Yeah. Is it better? Uh, I think it is. Is the connection? Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Well, our lesson is actually over. <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. Um, I just yeah. Okay, wait. One last question. One last question before we go. Um. Which country is the world's fifth largest exporter of wheat? 
Russia? No. Russia supplies oil and gas. It's yeah. Ukraine. Ukraine the, the, supplies. Ukraine Russia supplies have wheat mineral. Yes. Russia has the minerals, the oils, and the gas, and mm. the gold, and the diamonds. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay, well, that is basically it. Do you have any questions? Uh, do I have a class after this? Oh, okay, you do. Okay. Well, let me say goodbye. It was nice meeting you. And I enjoyed the lesson with you. I see, okay. I too. Have a good time. Okay. You too. Thanks, Michael. Bye. Bye. Wow. <laughs>